Hello and welcome to another episode of The Bryce Side. Now, a few months ago, maybe a year ago, I'm not sure, I popped into co-op and I bought every single Ginsters product that I could find. Took them to Morab Garden and sat down on a bench and consumed them. Now, I consumed them cold. The reviews weren't great. <laughs> you know, my review of them um, uh, wasn't great. And I always said, I think I might have said it in the video, that in the future I will go and kind of repeat the exercise, but bring them home and consume them hot, straight from the oven, as per the instructions, the heating instructions, to see if they are any better, any different. So, I am going to nip into town, pop into co-op, buy as many Ginsters products as I can, bring them home, put them in the oven, consume them, give you my thoughts. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So let's go check it out. Are you ready, Orc? Are you ready to eat Ginsters? No. I didn't think so. Oh, what am I doing? There's still time to turn back. No, I must continue with my quest. Okay, just about at the co-op where I'm going to find all of these Ginster products. Let's hope that nobody recognises me. Heading in. Okay, I have arrived at the refrigerator. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I'm doing this. Let's have a look. Let's not go completely overboard. I think they do the sausage rolls down here as well. Let's see if I can find a sausage roll from Ginsters. Uh, ah, right there in front of me. Okay, let's go pay. Please place your bags in the bagging area and press continue. Okay, I got out unscathed. I don't think anybody saw me or recognised me. Heading home. Actually, on my way home, I'm going to get a coffee from the Cornish Hen Delicatessen. I do quite like their coffee and I do like to support the little local businesses here. So, heading in for a coffee. Coffee procured, heading home. Right, made it home with these. What did we end up Because we are with? Because to be honest, I just piled whatever I could see in my bag as quickly as possible. <laughs> Uh, so a peppered steak slice, a sausage roll, a chicken tikka slice, states here medium heat, we'll see, and a cheese and onion slice. And then obviously, this. What are we dealing with in terms of cooking instructions? Um, our expert chefs insist on using fresh, wholesome British ingredients. That's why this classic Cornish recipe has only 100% British beef and locally sourced vegetables which are packed full of flavour, along with our Ginster's signature peppery kick, all encased in golden bake puff pastry for a delicious Cornish pasty. Reheating guidelines. I am ready to eat cold. Yeah, I tried that. But I'm even better if you warm me up in an oven or air fryer. Oh, that's interesting. You can air fry them. Preheat oven. Right, here we go. 
180 or 160 for a fan oven. Place on a baking tray. Uh, and if it's chilled, 20 to 25 minutes. I would imagine they're all kind of like 180, aren't they? Let's see what's going on here. Preheat to 180. Well, it was 170 fan, wasn't it? Uh, oven. That's 160 fan. So we'll, yeah, I don't know. We'll go for like a, a 160, 170. They're all about the same, aren't they? And we'll just get our cooking time. So this one's only like for 15, 20 minutes. The sausage roll. And what was, what was this? I can't remember, what was it? 25 minutes. can't remember the story exactly, but I did do a read up when I was uh, doing my review of these in uh, Morb Gardens. I got onto the interwaves, the interwebs and uh, did a bit of research on the Ginsters family. They came down from somewhere in the Midlands. Um, and, you know, so they're not, you know, they're not a Cornish family. But they moved down here at some point in the late 60s or something. Well, states there, 67. And, uh, yeah, there you go. I did <laughs> the story was quite funny, so I'm not going to repeat all that in this video. But what I'll do, I'll leave a link in the description. If you want to see me eat these in the park cold I'll leave a link in the description right that one takes the longest so we'll put that one in for 10 minutes and hit the timer and then put the others in for well, I say 10 minutes maybe uh, five minutes and then those go in for 15. I've taken them out of the wrapper and the peppered steak slice is a little bit worse for wear. Look at the state of that. What I do quite like is the artwork. I quite like the artwork on the um, Ginster's pro products. These are all the same. Um, these are, I thought they were a little bit different if I cast my mind back to the other video that I did a few months ago but uh, I mean, you know, I mean, the artwork, yeah. Okay, here we have it. Obviously the pasty at the top, the peppered steak slice there on the left, the chicken tikka, the chicken tikka slice in the middle, cheese and onion slice on the right, and the sausage roll there on the uh, bacon tray, all ready to consume and review. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the difference is. Don't don't misunderstand, I haven't got high hopes. I don't think these are going to review very well at all. Uh, you know, when they were cold, I mean... I, I, well, I mean, I, I, it was just something I... I it was awful, <laughs> to be quite frank. Um, so it will be interesting to see if they are less awful hot. Right, what I'm going to do a minute is I'm going to just cut these in half because obviously the, you know this is, this, this is a quite a considerable amount of food that I'll be having for my lunch so I don't really want like all of this uh, you know like in one hit so I'm gonna cut them all in half uh, the chicken tikka one has just fallen in half as I've cut it so obviously we have a major sort of structural integrity issue there uh, the pepper slice is already broken up into bits so we'll see we'll, we'll, we'll see what that's like <laughs> um, I'm just gonna I would never ever like cut a pasty in half because you eat it from one end and finish it the other but I am just gonna cut this pasty in half a minute and actually get a, a clearer sort of uh, you know look at the insides of it because you know sometimes when you're like munching away and stuff it's it's Hard to see inside so that's a nice clean cut through there so I think I will start with the pasty and then um, I'll give you my thoughts so when you like hear about Cornish people talking about Ginsters they will always say you know in, in regards to the pasty they will always say that it is not a pasty that it is it's it's gross it's you know etc etc uh, technically it is a pasty 
you know, they obviously say this is a, a Cornish pasty, and, and by by law they have to have certain ingredients in a Cornish pasty to make it a Cornish pasty. So ultimately a pasty can be, I, I assume, anything wrapped up in a, a, you know, a pastry sort of pie, if you know what I mean, and then crimped around the side or, or top, if you really want a top crimp. But, um, you know, so I suppose that that is the... the definition of what a pasty is because i you know i looked into it a while ago and actually i but I, I, I believe the origin of the pasty you know you, you get some people from devon who will say that it started in devon uh, you get people in cornwall that obviously say it, it started in cornwall but actually i think just a very quick google search um looked like it actually originated in france so it looks like the idea of a sort of a savory filling uh, wrapped in pastry looks like it was a French thing like back in the hello Toby <laughs> cat there um you know like back in the 1300s that's like the early one of the earliest mentionings of what a pasty is uh, or you know has has become was was from France so you know I don't know but to be a Cornish pasty you have to have potato we would say turnip but it's Swede beef a uh, beef steak and uh, what's the other one? What, and um, uh, onion, and that is the definition of a Cornish pasty. So if you were to have a chicken pasty, you can't have a chicken Cornish pasty. It's just a chicken pasty. Uh, but you know. But anyway, there is the inside of this Ginster's pasty. It is a bit mush-like inside. I can't see any like meat i mean i know there's meat in there but the meat is it looks like it's so like finely ground up that it's all kind of a bit of a mash with all the rest of it you can see the potatoes the potatoes are obviously there sort of defined uh so yeah i don't know let's let's see let's let's see what this is like Straight off the bat, I mean the pastry's dry. Straight off the bat, it, the, the innards are, they are just a little bit of a mush. I, I don't, I think I've got some meat in there, I'm not sure. Um, we know that they're not crimped by hand, that these are crimped by a machine. You know, there's no way any hands came close to crimping that. I mean, ultimately, got oh, a bit of pepper there. <clears throat> ultimately, yes, it ticks the box for being a Cornish pasty because it has those ingredients to make it a Cornish pasty. But then we come to the quality of it. You know, obviously the quality of this is not going to be high when you compare it to some of the smaller bakeries around, some of the butchers. Care and love, I think, is put into a lot of pasties. Again, not the bigger bakeries, not so much, but the sort of smaller bakeries and the butchers they, I don't know, they seem to take pride in their pasties. This, at the end of the day, this will just fill a hole, so to speak. It, when you compare it to other pasties, again, this is my opinion, this is awful. Um, but it is considerably better hot, I'm, I've got to be honest. When you have a Ginsters and you just pick one up for convenience sake, and uh, you just take it with you and you eat on the go. It's cold. It's, you know, it's just, it's just not very nice. This, I've got to admit, is 10 times better hot. So I think that's probably going to be the same for the other products here that I've got. They are going to be 10 times better than cold. That is absolutely for sure. I think there's a bit of meat there. What's it's very pale, the meat. The meat is very pale and like, 
It's just, at the end of the day, I think the best thing you can say is this is just a mass produced pasty. It is just, it is just made in a factory. There's no love, there's no care given to it. Like I said, it's not crimped. It's just, I don't know, I've never been in a Ginster's factory. It's, it's probably just all, you know, it's just all a conveyor belt, maybe automated. I don't know, it might be splodged in by, um, you know, like a conveyor belt of people, if you know what I mean. I have no idea. And like I said, this video is completely my opinion. I know lots of people will disagree with what I'm saying, because like I said, there are people who will enjoy against us. I mean, whatever Ginsters are doing, let's be honest, they must be, they must be doing all right because they're quite a big company. I mean, they, they sell all around the United Kingdom. Any sort of, um, you know, any sort of like grab and go area in a supermarket or a convenience store or something, you're going to find a, a Ginsters. So they must sell. Yeah, I, for me, I don't like this. Like I said, it, it is it is a factory produced, you know, product. Is it disgusting? No, no, it's not disgusting. Am I glad I'm doing this test? Actually, bizarrely, I am. I have never had a hot Ginsters. And like I said, it is considerably better than a cold Ginsters. That is absolutely 100 percent, you know, legit in my again, in my opinion. This is all my opinion. I'm not a food expert. I'm not trained in the field as such. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I do have bakery qualifications, but that was a long time ago. I did many moons ago. I used to work in a bakery. It's like one of the worst jobs I've, I think I've ever had. <laughs> you know, like a kid. I can't even remember how old I was now. 17, something like that. And I was on, I was on the, I say late shift. It wasn't like the late shift, but it was like, I, th I think I started at about 6 a.m. in the morning. All the other like bakers and stuff, they got in there at 2 a.m. to get all the prep done for the bakery. And, um... I got in at six. And, um, you know, so did what I needed to do. Blah, blah, blah. And um, I was put on the pasty line sometimes because we all did different sort of jobs within the um, bakery. Put on the pasty line sometimes and uh, they weren't great pasties. They, they were okay, but they weren't great pasties. And, um, I, I st you know, couldn't crimp couldn't crimp at all. I, I, I still can't crimp. That is something I have to learn to do. I might have to like Google it if, if it's like available. I mean, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be on online, isn't it? On like YouTube or something. How to crimp a pasty. Has to be done. I can't, I can't crimp a pasty. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, yeah, that was, that was a job I had quite a few years ago. And, and like you say, you're getting it like 6am. Oh, I didn't enjoy that job. Hours were awful. The pay sucked. Anyway. Would I eat that again? No. Uh, it, well, in an emergency situation, would I eat that again? Probably. And what I mean by that is, you know, I mean, if I'm in town, if I'm in town, obviously not. I mean, they I they would be, they would be bottom of the list. You know, you would. I think I would get a pasty pretty much from anywhere. I mean, I don't know about like a Tesco own pasty or something. I mean, again, I've never had one of those. I have seen people review them, and again, they 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 think they're really nice. But I can't speak. Haven't had one. But no, it, to me, no. I mean, if, if I'm in town, 
I'll always go to the butchers or um, there's a new place called Loafs. So I say new place, maybe it's been open about a year, maybe get a pasty from there. And there's now an oven, a Cornish oven in town, so you don't have to stank all the way out to Eastern Green to get a Cornish oven. They're okay. They're pretty good. Um, but would I have against us again? No, again, emergency situation if I was absolutely ravenous. I suppose. But like I said, hand on heart, I will say, as a Cornishman, 1,000 times better hot. Unless you are literally picking one up off the shelf and just eating it as you go and you're eating it cold, you know, it's up to you. But if you can at least get it in an oven, um, it, it will be better. <laughs> it will be, excuse me. Uh, it will be much better. Right, I'm going to only, only eat half of that. I'll eat the other half later or, I don't know, give it to the cat or the dog I don't have. And I'm going to now eat the... I'm going to just do it in order. So I'm going to go with the peppered slice. This one now is the one that is falling to bits. So this is half of it. Obviously, I've cut it in half. I think it's more moist, this is more, juicy is the wrong word. It's not juicy. It's just mushy moist. <laughs> I can't believe I've just said that. Mushy, <laughs> mushy moist. <laughs> um, oh, just dropped the packet, hang on. This one says, British beef, potatoes, onion, single cream, cauliflower, cauliflower, oh, cornflower, <laughs> there's a cauliflower, um, garlic puree, beef stock, obviously pepper is a pepper, so mustard, um, lemon, so spirit vinegar, lemon juice, concentrate, beef fat, that's pretty much all that's in that. Yeah, that pre-made, factory-made puff pastry. You know what I mean. A little bit greasy. Not horrible. I mean, to be fair, it's because you find. I think I would eat this over. I think I would eat this over the pasty. Um, this is a. This is a. I would say this is a, a better product than the pasty. I think here's the thing with Ginsters. When they make a Cornish pasty. Um, they're trying to adhere to centuries of tradition. And that's very hard to do, particularly if you work out of a factory. If you want something that is local, I mean, they state that all their like ingredients are local and blah, 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 that their beef is British at least. But, but if you want to make a time-honoured product, you've got to, you know, put that sort of tender loving care into it. If you're gonna make a pasty, Cornish pasty, you know, specifically a Cornish pasty, you're gonna to need to adhere to certain rules. You know, it's gonna to need to, you know, by law, and it's gonna to need to be spot on if you want it to be thought of well, if that makes sense. You know, some of the pasties, a couple of, you know, places I get my pasties from, I mean, they're banging, they're fantastic. They, they they put that TLC into the product and you can taste it. What you cannot taste, going back to the pasty, is that sort of TLC. It's, it's you know, it's a factory thing. Anyway, peppered slice. Um, it, it was all right, would I eat that again? At a push? Yeah, no, I'd eat that again. Um, it, it was all right, yeah. Peppered slice, uh, the peppered, Steak slice. It was all right. 
Right, next up, chicken tikka slice. Get this one. This is the better looking half. The other half is all broken up. So again, structural integrity. Now I like a curry, like a tikka flavor. Uh, but I kind of like that in, what's that? Oh, 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 okay, part of the pastry. Pastry's raw in the middle, kind of. I mean, even though I baked it, but anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I've got to admit, I don't, I'm not particularly looking forward to this, a chicken tikka slice. I seem to remember the, the sort of curried flavoured ones that they did. I, they weren't that great. Again, cold. But... No, I don't like that at all. Um, in a way, it kind of tricks your senses because, you, you know, you, you think, oh, chicken tikka, all right. And, and again, I, I kind of, chicken tikka, I'm going to eat Indian cuisine. You know, not in pastry, if that makes sense. Easy to eat, in fact, you know, there's no, there's no substance to, the, to this one. You can kind of see that there. I mean, again, you, I mean, it, state, it states there are two, uh, two little chilies to denote its heat. It's not hot at all. I'm, um, you know, spicy hot. No, I don't like that. Would I eat this one again? I don't think so. I'm going to put that one down. Um, that'll be my personal taste for me. Like I said, if I see an Indian, you know, tikka, whatever it is, I kind of want it with rice. I want it in a bowl with rice and poppadoms and naan bread and that sort of thing. I don't really want it in a pastry case. I will eat the odd coronation chicken sandwich, but that's a little bit different, isn't it? I mean, that's like a cold sandwich and was created back in the 50s for, for, for the Queen's coronation. Oh, Toby, baby, what's the matter? You just keep whinging. <sighs> right, so yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, personally, I wouldn't eat the tikka slice again. Again, the, again, I have to reiterate, this is all my opinion. Uh, next up, cheese and onion slice. States here, West Country cheddar. Looks kind of just like a cheese and onion slice. Again, like all of the products, better hot. Um, is this enjoyable? No, <laughs> this is better. I prefer this to the tikka slice. I prefer this one. When it comes to taste, I think the top ones of the slices is the peppered steak. Uh, no, it, this, would I eat this one again? Probably not. Again, in some sort of emergency situation. Uh, maybe. No, I don't like this. I'll put that one back. Ultimately, <clears throat> goodness. Ultimately, nothing wrong with it in terms, you know, if you, I, I like cheese, I like onion. I'm not the biggest fan of cheese and onion together. So admittedly, that'll be, you know, that'll be my own sort of personal taste. Again, quality. You know, factory produced. Which, you know, I mean, a lot of stuff is, isn't it? A lot of stuff is produced in a factory. You know, Ginsters aren't doing anything different there when it comes to food production, I guess. But, um, but yeah, uh, so peppered slice, 
followed by the cheese and onion slice, then followed by the chicken tikka. That will probably be the order I would eat them in. Um, again, if, if, like I said, if I had to. Last thing I need to check out is the sausage roll, the humble sausage roll. Surely not much can go wrong with a sausage roll, right? I mean, you know, I mean, it's just a, it's just a sausage roll. bit dry meat is a bit mushy a bit lifeless okay maybe <clears throat> goodness maybe things can go wrong with the sausage roll Well, there it is, I did it. We were talking about a while, we were talking about it for a while, like I said, because I did all those Ginster products cold a few months back and I, and we were kind of thinking that uh, we ought to really kind of repeat the video, if you will, but with them hot. So I thought, okay, that's fair enough. So that's what we did. That's what we've just done. It's kind of like lunch, covered. <laughs> um, so overall, overall, they were all right. Like I said, didn't like the chicken tikka very much, didn't like the cheese slice, but the more sort of meaty products, the peppered steak, that was all right. The, uh, Sausage roll, well, it wasn't great. I mean, I have a better, definitely, but it was all right and it had a push. And then this, uh, yeah, does tick all the boxes for a Cornish pasty, uh, but in my opinion, pretty gross. And I, I, I said this a few times on the video, you know, if you're visiting from England, if you come down and you want to try a pasty, please go to a small bakery or a butcher's, they are far superior. Read some reviews, maybe, you know, if, if you're kind of like, I know, a bit of the stank round St. Ives, for example, just type in pasties, just type in pasties in St. Ives and see what comes up as a good rated pasty. Um, and, and then go to there. I'm not saying steer clear of a Ginsters. It's my personal choice. I don't like them. I think they're awful. Um, but, you know, if you like a Ginsters, then you like a Ginsters. That's awesome. So that's kind of like my review on the Ginsters products there. Uh, the pasty, like I said, you know, push comes to shove. If you had to eat one, then, you know, they are edible. Um, again, definitely hot, not cold. Do I like them? Absolutely not. <laughs> Will I have them again? Probably not. Uh, they're, they're just, like, you can just taste it. You can just taste it. There is no TLC in it. There is no love put into it. They're, they're just, they don't have any character. They're soulless. You know, when you, when you bite into like a proper pasty, oh, they, there's nothing quite like it. They have character. They're, you know, they're just, they just really taste of something delicious. This is just, you know, again, in my opinion, soulless rubbish. Anyway, <clears throat> we're gonna leave the video there. I do hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to do all the usual YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, smash the bell. Check us out on all of our socials at the Bryce side. So from us to you, cheers and gone. I, oh, I normally twist the camera in, but I got it on a tripod.